Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to show you a slide uh, with the cross-section of testes tissue. So we're going to have a look at sperm production, so how sperm cells are produced in mammals. And what I've made here is, is I've made first a diagram, so I'm going to explain to you first what you're going to see uh, later on under the microscope. So first of all, what you see is a schematic diagram of the cross-section of testes tissue. And inside the testes, there are many of these tubules. And this is now the cross-section of one of these tubules. So this is the wall of the tubule and there's an empty space in here uh, where the finished sperm cells are carried away. And if you have a problem imagining this, you have to imagine this a little bit like this pen. Uh, imagine that this pen is this tubule and we're looking at it from the side over here. Okay, um, so it's like uh, the side view. And uh, of course, everything is made of cells, so you're going to see many small cells. And what happens is the following is that sperm production starts here on the side, on the wall of this tubule. Okay, so there are cells in here that start to divide. And as uh, they divide, they start to form sperm cells. And the sperm cells, they're formed uh, working inwards into this tubule. So um, the cells divide and they divide and divide, they um, undergo cell division. And then when uh, they have reached the inside of the tubule over here, then we start to have a finished sperm cell. And this is supposed to be the head of the sperm cell. And over here we have the tail of the sperm cell. And this not only happens once, but happens many times um, around here. So that is uh, basically where sperm cells come from. They come from the wall of the tubule and are made inwards. And then in here, this is the empty space where the finished sperm cells. I'm just going to draw one right now over here. Okay. The finished sperm cell will end up and is then carried away. And you can see there's one tubule over here, there are many of these, okay? And you also see over here that there are um, cells over here between the tubules. And these cells over here that you can find here, they are responsible for making hormones. For example, the hormone testosterone, okay? Because the testes are responsible for making hormones and for making sperm cells. Under the microscope, however, um, it's kind of difficult to see the head of the sperm cells because there's so many cells, it's difficult to distinguish them. But something that can be seen really well um, are the tails, because I'm just going to use this down here now. Uh, what you're going to see is if this is the head, there, the tails, they will extend inwards. And there are many of these tails that extend inwards. So it looks like a lot of fibers or strings. Okay, um, So there are hundreds and thousands, if not millions of them. And then what happens is they will detach, they will break off, and then uh, they will end up in here and they will swim away um, and are carried away. Okay, so this is what we're going to see. And uh, what I'm going to do then now is I'm going to show you a histological cross section. Um, histology is the study of tissues. Okay, so I'm going to uh, show you a, a slide, a prepared slide uh, with the cross section of testes, and uh, you're able to see then um, all of these structures that I've just explained to you. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the microscope and let's have a look. We are now looking at the testes tissue at low magnification, and you can see many of these tubules. However, the magnification is not really high enough yet uh, to see the tails of the sperm cells. You might see a little bit uh, a grayish uh, discoloration inside each tubule. Well, these are the tails, but actually they're still um, yeah, too fuzzy and too blurry to be seen. So we need to go to a higher magnification and to a higher resolution. Now we slowly start uh, to see uh, the tails of the sperm cells and now we can also see the individual cells um, of uh, the tubules. We can see also purple dark circles that you see. Well, these are the individual cells. So there are thousands and thousands of cells uh, that uh, make up these tubules. I always think it's quite fascinating to see how complex and integrate everything is. Well, yet at a higher magnification, we can now see the sperm cells uh, quite well. And between the tubules, if you look carefully, you can also see some red areas. And these are red blood cells because, of course, the testis tissue also has to be supplied with blood. Now, this last slide looks a little bit strange. You might see that uh, there are lots of uh, lines there and it's a little bit blurry. I just wanted to show this to you. This is uh, an example when you do not uh, use proper microscopy technique. In this case, the condenser of the microscope um, was closed too much. And all of those lines that you see are so-called diffraction patterns. 
So what you have to do is, is you have to open the condenser a little bit uh, to improve the resolution and the image quality. I just wanted to show this picture to you so that you can compare a little bit how the image quality can change uh, when you uh, open and close the condenser of the microscope. Well, at the end now, an interesting fact. I read somewhere that uh, a human male produces on the average around 65 million sperm cells every day. Now that's a large number, 65 million. But in recent years, uh, the sperm count has uh, really declined a lot. And one of the reasons what they assume is, is that uh, there are environmental pollutants that uh, contribute to that, that uh, male fertility has gone down over the years significantly. Well, uh, in any case, I hope uh, this was an interesting episode uh, for you and uh, I wish you a nice day and all the best.